haven't I understood the weakness of my flesh? It disgusted me. Hey, this is Chris at Talon Gaming. Today we're going to look at Warhammer 40,000 Mechanicus. Produced by Bulwark Studios and published by Casito Games in 2018, Mechanicus is a turn-based strategy where you play as Magos Dominus Fastinius on board the Ark Mechanicus orbiting a newly discovered planet, Silva Tenebris. Here you control tech priests and Skatari troops through a myriad of missions across an entire planet. You'll upgrade your priests and your troops over time while seeking to eradicate the presence of the cyborg-like Necrons. As part of the wider arcing Warhammer 40k franchise, Mechanicus is a standalone single-player game with a variety of DLC to choose from if you're looking for more content. The game's available for PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and Windows PC. PC requirements are somewhat modest, requiring a dual-core CPU, although a quad-core is recommended, along with 8 gigs of RAM, a Radeon 7970 or GTX 770 or greater, and 11 gigs of storage. Check the video description for more details. Although not all that complex, there's still a lot to cover, so let's dig into the main aspects of the game. Mechanicus features a command structure which is led by you, a Magus Dominus named Fastinius, and then by a handful of Subdomina which act as commanders who offer up missions and advice, and then you have tech priests who the combat is centered around, and finally you have Skatari troops and servitors who are additional soldiers that have specific uses and can be treated basically as cannon fodder for the fray. The tech screen shows you every bit of tech that you've unlocked so far, although you'll never be able to unlock them all in a single playthrough. Weapons come in various forms and offer several different damage types. Support items can be used to increase armor, increase damage, heal, etc. Troops consist of servitors and Satari soldiers that support your tech priests in combat. Ship upgrades can, for example, allow you to increase the total number of tech priests and troops deployed, and increase the total number of cognition or action points during the mission. Mechanical upgrades are single-use items that have a variety of effects including healing, increased damage output, restoring cognition points, and more. The cohort screen shows the vitals of your Skatari troops, servitors, and tech priests. Hovering over a troop shows you the damage types and various skills for the unit type. Tech priests can be accessed here as well, but there's far more to see and do. You can customize your loadout, view your statistics, and access the entire skill and upgrade tree. The upgrade tree has a handful of different skill paths to mix and match as you like, and alternates between skill and item unlocks. Each unlock increases your augment capacity, which you can use to equip your tech priests. Depending on the size and complexity of some weapons and equipment, they take more capacity to wield than others. Awakening is a game mechanic that helps to keep you focused and punishes you for taking the scenic route by increasing difficulty. There are two types of awakening in the game. Mission Awakening has levels ranging from 0 to 7. Levels each consist of 5 points with 2 points gained for each room you travel through. When you hit 5 points, the awakening level raises by 1. Additionally, points can be raised or lowered in the various rooms you travel through and during combat. At level 1, the Necrons become aware of your presence. At level 2, the number of Necrons increase and so on. It helps to encourage economy of movement throughout the game. The Global Awakening levels range from 0 to 100%. The mission awakening levels at the end of the mission gets added to your total, a minimum of 3 points. At 75%, the final boss will be unlocked, and at 100% you'll have no other missions available and you must fight the final boss. Let's talk about the mission screen where mission selection consists of first selecting a subdomina and weighing the objectives, rewards, difficulty level, and projected enemies for each available choice. Next comes a deployment screen where you'll select your tech priests, your troops, and canicals, followed by a mission briefing and finally deployment. Mission deployment consists of navigating a tactical overview from the ship in orbit where you oversee movement using a projection of the landscape. You'll enter rooms with glyphs, ruins, or encounters with necrons. Some rooms offer multiple choices with different consequences of range from giving you Blackstone, the in-game currency, healing or damaging your units, or otherwise affecting Necron Awakening. Every room traversed increases Awakening by two points. Rooms with mission objectives are shown as white diamonds and must be cleared in order to finish the mission successfully, sometimes several times in a single mission deployment. The briefing follows after the missions have been completed or all your tech priests have died. Upon entering combat, you will deploy your tech priests and troops as well if you have available cognition points. The combat zone uses a simple grid layout, there's no fog of war, no true cover system, and only line of sight for ranged weapons and proximity for melee weapons. The tactical map can be navigated using the mouse or WSAD keys and can be rotated using Q and E. 
If you prefer, you can use the bird's eye view or zoom right in to be up close and personal. Cognition points act like action points and can be shared by your tech priests. Not every action requires one and can be collected from access points and through unlock skills and corpses. Additionally, cognition points can be used to extend movement and all but the most basic weapons use points to attack and the number of points required to attack varies depending on the weapon, skill, or support item used. Servitors and Skatari troops can be deployed when cognition points are available, both at the start of combat and at the beginning of each round. They act as uh, basic troops with limited skill sets, whose actions do not require cognition points and essentially act as cannon fodder with unique skills and attributes. You'll also have the use of servo skulls, which reveal enemy vitals, collect cognition points, and can be upgraded to actually inflict damage. Once the mission is complete, you'll be presented with a unit and mission debriefing screen where you'll see your losses, your kills, objectives, rewards, and updated awakening level and mission statistics. Let's talk about graphics. Textures and animations are good, they are not outstanding, but they really do illustrate the characters, the weapons, and their equipment quite well. There aren't huge landscapes or even much of a variety of landscapes to explore, but everything here meshes together nicely. Cutscenes outside of the intro and ending aren't really a thing here in Mechanicus, as the focus lies elsewhere. I did notice some visual stuttering from time to time, characters running in place for the duration of combat, and some minor artifacting, but nothing too bothersome. Sound effects are crisp and clear and represent the action of the characters nicely. They are fairly repetitive, but I feel accurate nonetheless. The musical soundtrack is fantastic. A techno-gothic lineup with bassy notes intermixed with choruses really helped to surround you with Warhammer 40,000. The game isn't stuffed full of voice acting for the most part, You'll find voice approximations for the various communication going on. Apparently in the 41st millennia, we've moved on to bigger and better things. The Necrons, however, are nicely voiced with mechanical intonations. Your manner of warfare is intriguing. The story here is quite good if you take the time to read the dialogue. It fits really well into the 40k universe, as much or more than any other game out there. If you enjoy the mechanicalistic, religious overtones of the franchise, you're going to like what the game has to offer. Controls are quite simple to use here, as I quickly felt at home navigating the various interfaces of Mechanicus. I did notice the mouse pointer not always selecting what I had highlighted during combat, but the instances of this were pretty minimal. The turn-based system here, using both the awakening mechanic and cognition points, can really make for an interesting and challenging experience. You start out feeling pretty empty-handed, but as you upgrade your gear and your tech priests, the game really comes into its own. I would expect a normal playthrough to take a minimum of 20 hours for the majority of gamers. The intertwined and in some cases exclusive stories of each of the subdomina also means that you won't be able to play through each of the story arcs through to the end on a single playthrough. You'll need to come back again and in doing so get to experience a handful of different possible endings. While this may not be a big budget game, what you do get is what I would consider as authentic a Warhammer 40k game as you might find anywhere. The look, the feel, the music, and the story, all things that make you believe that you're part of the lore. The fact that this is turn-based also opens the game and the universe up to those who are fans of turn-based strategies in general like XCOM and Data Point. If you enjoy turn-based strategy or anything Warhammer 40k, then I suggest you give this one a chance. I'm glad I did. As always, thanks for watching everyone. If you watched this far, don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing for more content just like this. This is Chris from Talent Gaming, signing out.